Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be reviewing the Icarus Jump Jets for the Light Assault class, which is actually an ability that existed in beta a long time ago, but has recently been reincarnated into an iteration that doesn't break hit detection the way the old ones did. We'll go through these statistics, how they compare to other types of jump jets, and offer up some tips on how to use them effectively. The Icarus jump jets are named in reference to the Greek mythology of Icarus, who with wings of wax and feathers, flew too close to the sun and then plummeted to his death. That's fitting given that the Icarus jump jets give you a lot of vertical height in a short amount of time, but aren't so great at breaking your fall. Icarus are a pretty expensive certification line as a whole, but the great thing about the progression is that you can take full advantage of the vertical height that they offer right at rank 1, as it's only the regeneration rate that increases over time with no impact on fuel capacity. Regardless of rank, your fuel bar will deplete in about a second and a half. However, you won't hit the apex of your jump until about 2.2 seconds, provided you had boosters down the whole time. That's due to the floating nature of this type of jet. The activation cost for a jump is roughly 11% of your fuel supply, so if you were to start on the ground and just spam spacebar over and over and over, you'd see that you can jump about 9 times before the thrusters fail. Interesting thing though is that, provided you hold down the boosters for a moment longer than it takes to activate them, the initial strength of the boost will be stronger than the subsequent boost that you get from just holding down the boosters the whole time. So even though there is an activation cost, you can hit the jump jets about three times or so during the same jump and get about the same height as you would have if you had just held down the boosters the whole time. This is kind of important to keep in mind when it comes to maneuverability later. On the left hand side you'll see the certification costs of each rank and the improvement in regeneration both per second and from empty. And they're different because if you completely exhaust your fuel there is a short delay before they start recharging again, but if you've still got juice in the tank, they start recharging instantly. The recovery time in seconds includes the delay from a completely exhausted tank. The percentages per second are the ones that SOE provided in the ability description, whereas the from empty and the recovery time in seconds are put together from in-game testing. It's also worth noting that during times of high server load, if you spam your jump jets in short bursts, the server may not register that you've actually used any fuel, which means that you can fly higher than you would normally. If you've ever had a medkit heal you and then take it all away, it's the same premise except in reverse, and this happens for all jump jet types. So as you can tell here, 50 certs gets you started, and then 1800 certs later, you only get a 20% faster recharge speed. Now from the outset, that doesn't seem like a lot, but you will definitely feel the change in the game. Beyond the very quick recharge rate, the main draw to the Icarus jump jets is just how quickly you move. Icarus are the fastest way to scale anything that doesn't have obstacles in the way, but they're just god awful at doing anything with horizontal movement, and they aren't so great at going down either. In regards to horizontal movement, even while holding the forward movement key, you aren't going to get a whole lot of it. Here's a quick example comparison between standard and Icarus jump jets that show off how close either one of them would need to be in order to reach the same platform from the ground. Another downside is breaking fall damage. It's almost impossible to keep from killing yourself from extreme heights, but feathering your jump jets will help mitigate the damage from more reasonable distances, and that's much more effective than just holding down the jump jets for a full burn. It should go without saying, but Safe Fall is a pretty useful implant to run with this jump jet type, much more so than standards of drifters. The last downside that I would like to bring up is just how predictable your movement becomes, and this is where standards and drifters really trump Icarus when it comes to combat movement or a ground game. Squeezing on the jump jets basically turns you into a frog. Remember that reaching the apex of your jump happens a fair amount of time after you let off the thrusters if you aren't feathering them. While the initial acceleration is actually a really good way to throw off enemy shooters, as the surprise wears off you will become very trackable. Standard jump jets and drifter jump jets not only have more horizontal movement, but they can also drop mid-flight and then start jetting again, because they actually have enough fuel capacity to do that. This also comes into play when you talk about delivering C4. 
Here's a fun little graphic that showcases the strengths of each jump jet as it relates to dropping C4 on a target. Drifter jump jets, thanks to their sustainability and hang time, have no problem gliding over a target, dropping C4, and then continuing on without having to touch the ground. Standard jump jets don't have as much fuel capacity, but their increased vertical height lets them deliver from both the ground or the air, depending on the situation. And the Icarus jump jets basically require a lot more leg work, since all you get is vertical thrust. You really need to close the distance on foot before dropping C4. This can lead to you dying before you ever reach your target, or at the very least, giving the enemy the opportunity to run off before you get close enough to stick the C4. A cool benefit though, thanks to that quick acceleration, is that it's really easy to get out of the way of the blast radius after you do. Another benefit is basically doing what the frogs were doing earlier, popping up, tossing C4, then potentially getting out of harm's way before anything terrible happens. Because of their speed, Icarus allows you to harness this element of surprise in a lot of situations. The last thing I want to talk about before we move into some quicker tips are a couple of the mechanics of jump jet flight in general. It impacts all types, but it's even more important to know for Icarus, given the limitations you have on a horizontal plane. While your Icarus jump jets are active and boosting, holding forward, left, or right all have about the same strength along a horizontal plane, so if you hammer on the thrusters and then you move sideways, you'll receive the same amount of distance traveled as you would have if you were facing the target and moving forwards. The other two jump jets actually move a little bit more quickly forward than they do to the left or the right. Another thing, and hopefully I can explain this correctly, is that while Icarus is active, it will strip away your forward momentum, especially after the first few moments of acceleration. More forward momentum takes place while falling, and shortly during and after the activation of the jump jets, than actually holding the jump jet itself. And this is a truth that's shared by all jump jet types to greater or lesser degrees. What's important here though, is knowing how to retain that forward momentum. When it comes to Icarus, the first thing you need to know is just not to thrust to the point where you will start to lose too much of your forward momentum. And you'll feel this pretty easily if you practice for a little bit. While you're doing this, you should also be holding a movement key in the desired direction at all times and this is going to help you keep that transitional state engaged. The second and more important step is that while in a transitional state, so while the jump jets are starting to activate and give you lift, you want to be facing perpendicular to the direction that you're actually trying to go. Facing perpendicular to your movement direction while there is a transfer of power is more effective at maintaining momentum than if you were to face the same direction you're trying to go. That is, unless you're in an actual fall state, as in falling either up or down while your jump jets are off, and in that case, while you're in a falling state, you want to be facing the direction you actually want to go. And this is stupidly counterintuitive, it's convoluted, and I probably didn't explain it right, but it's also a very powerful technique that's worth knowing how to do. If you've ever seen me just look around while I'm jump jetting, it's usually to help conserve that momentum. It's more than likely that there are some discrepancies here, given that I don't know the mechanics behind the design, but this is what I've been able to dissect based on testing and footage and a whole lot of experience. The easiest way to show you how to do this is just to give you some footage to play with and let you try it out for yourself. So if you go to the casual channel, you're going to find a short clip that's solely for this purpose. It outlines the technique from worst to best and provided you heard my explanation here and hopefully made some sense of it, it will give you enough information to figure it out for yourself. I have linked that in the video description for you if you feel like checking it out. Alright, now that that's all done with, let's get into some shorter, less difficult to explain tips that'll help you make the most out of your Icarus jump shots. The first is to just try not to use more juice than you have to. Since you can hit the jump jets a few times and still achieve the same height as you would with a full burn, you want to be able to recognize where the apex of your jump will actually occur beyond the initial thrust. That way you don't just dangle in the air and let people play duck hunt with you. Speaking of dangling in the air, if you press and hold or even tap the crouch key, you'll initiate your descent a little bit earlier. If you try holding the crouch or the sprint or the jump key in an elevator, you'll understand what I'm getting at. It's the same sort of premise as there is directional influence in Planet Side 2. We just talked about this earlier, but falling offers more forward momentum than boosting does, and because of that, you want to sprint and jump for a ways 
before you hit the thrusters. Do not be afraid to let yourself go down before you come back up, especially when it comes to crossing short gaps, like moving from one rooftop to the next. As a little side note here, since sprinting and jumping is kind of a big deal with these jets, there's a little bit more value in having the adrenaline pump suit slot equipped. Now full disclosure is that I actually enjoy running adrenaline pump, so you can take that for what you will. When climbing taller buildings or trees or hills, it's good to know that you can usually just stick to surfaces that are almost vertical by just not moving. While you have the jump jets active, you will move toward your facing direction a little bit, regardless of whether you're holding W or not. This can sometimes put you under the lip of the platform that you're aiming for if you don't space appropriately. Letting off of your thrusters for a moment can help you make minor course corrections to deal with issues like this. That said, overall, Icarus jump jets are fast. They offer you a lot of vertical height very quickly, but they aren't without their flaws. I'd go so far as to say that currently, standard jump jets are still more useful overall, but they're certainly not as fun, at least not to me. At 50 certifications, you get most of the thrusters potential right out of the box, and you can basically unlock the other ranks at your leisure. The 20% additional regeneration definitely offers a shift in how the thrusters play out, but it's not so overwhelming that it takes priority. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you've had a chance to play with the Icarus Jump Jets, I'm interested in hearing what you think about them. So go ahead and leave those thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.